Hey everybody, I'm back to talk a little bit more about our Project LS, LS engine into a Cadillac, engine swap. And today's going to be a little bit about background. You know, if you're going to do one of these projects and you're going to try to do a swap, you need to get an engine somewhere. And, you know, there's a wide range. You could go buy a brand new one from, uh, you know, from GM Performance. You can find a used one probably in a salvage yard or a rack or whichever. I mean, there are a lot of different choices. Probably way too many for me to go into. So what I'm going to concentrate on is, you know, um, what did we do? We had an opportunity. My son had an opportunity. And uh, we're trying to um, leverage that. In the family, we had a 2001 Chevrolet Avalanche that had pretty much mm, aged out, I'll call it. Uh, the owner um, had a fondness for snowmobiling up in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan in the wintertime and driving from Lower Michigan, putting lots of miles on, heading up. You know, so the truck had a lot of highway miles on it and it saw a lot of salt. So it, the rust, you know, at the age that it was getting to be, um, the rust was getting to be kind of a big deal. And so the, the, it was time for a new vehicle and Dan was able to get it and uh, and, and use it for, I'm going to say, we salvaged the engine and powertrain out of it. Um, it was a, it's what I'm going to call a donor vehicle. And there are some advantages to having that donor vehicle, and we'll kind of go through those as we go. Um, you know, the rust was kind of a lot of fun getting it apart. Um, there were piles of rust on the driveway by the time we were done. Um, in addition to having run for a while, um, it did sit for, I don't know, a year or two before we got to it, but it's a 2001 Avalanche 1500 with a 5.3 and um, four-wheel drive, which causes its own set of complications, I'll say. And um, in any case, um, I helped him get out there and wrench and helped him get the engine out. Um, I don't have video of us doing the pull. It'll, we're going to work on uh, on still shots, but uh, I'm going to talk through and. You know, I'm sure we can find some other videos of pulling engines. I got one for the Camaro. I mean, there's different places, but um, I'm just going to walk through this here. Now, starting, and you go, oh, what's that? Well, that's the air intake on this one. And uh, the point is that we went through and looked at every place there was a sensor. So there's a, uh, I believe that's mass airflow up there. And as, as we were prepping, we tracked down all the wiring in great detail. Now, I'll say before we get too far in, um, you know, before we started going to pull the engine, you got to go in underneath and cut the exhaust or cut or unbolt. We ended up in the end um, cutting it. We elected to remove the transfer case and the drive shaft first. Uh, it gets, um, you can do the whole thing as pull out engine transmission and transfer case as a unit and separate them later. But I, I was looking at it going, you know, that's really pretty heavy and awkward. And uh, the transfer case itself isn't that heavy. It's more the awkward part. And so um, we went in and uh, went underneath, got the prop shaft and got the, you know, we did kind of underneath all of the disconnections we could. We popped the transfer case off. That really wasn't all that hard. Um, and the two of us could, I mean, we, we dropped that down real easy. And then we had only the engine transmission to work with. And as you're doing exhaust system, I'll say, you know, you got oxygen sensors down there, um, fuel lines to get around, you've got transmission cooler lines. So there's a lot you can do underneath, which, which we did. And again, um, we saved all the wiring that we could. Every piece of everything, every sensor, every switch, we saved it all. No cutting. No cutting. And there's good reason for that. We can talk about some more. So that's just a close-up of that, of that connector. And then, you know, my standard method, and you've seen it on the Camaro, you've seen it other places, um, you can use anything you want, but my method is blue tape. And a, and a Sharpie marker. And everything you disconnect, or every bracket you take off, you label it. And 
mark it so that you know what it is and the wiring's especially that way and then I use uh, you know like Ziploc sandwich bags to put nuts and bolts in and again Sharpie you know mark those bags because I'll tell you what doesn't take long days weeks months and you won't remember where those bolts came from so anyway um, we also took lots and lots of pictures because eventually the vehicle is going to be gone you're going to want to know how things go back together so even here accessory belt routing you know find the one for the V8s you know and so that you remember after you've after we take the engine out some of the accessories get removed even as we're pulling things apart so it just helps document 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 here's just another look at um, a little closer look at the engine and uh, that big big one here in the middle is um, is one of the main wiring harnesses over to the fuse box on the opposite side we've got air conditioning to deal with and this particular one had had a problem with the air conditioning and it had been um, evacuated at the shop uh, some years before the refrigerant's been recovered so we didn't have any problem uh, with pressure in that system Knowing how much fun it is to get one of those engines out and up and over, we wanted a little extra room. The truck wasn't uh, going to run again. Uh, so we spent the time to come across the front and, uh, and pull out the radiator, the air conditioning condenser, the, um, you know, the whole front, I'll call it radiator support that goes across the front of the car, so, front of the truck. So the grill, the headlights, the the whole front end is cleared out. Now, safety note, I'll tell you, I I almost hurt myself severely. I was very, very fortunate. I'm still not sure how I didn't hurt myself, but when you get everything out like this, um, I was standing on this cross member up here in the front, working on the top of the plenum here underneath the air, um, underneath that beauty cover and, and working on some fasteners and something I was working on, I was tugging on, um, came loose very abruptly and very unexpectedly and I ended up losing my balance and falling out backwards, falling out of the front of the truck. And that cross member is like what, you know, it's, it's, 12 to 18 inches off the ground and you're standing up on top of that and I came out and fell flat on my back on the pavement and we had he had a couple of things uh, there was some padding very thin blanket or something was on the on the pavement that I fell onto but uh, it was almost a miracle because um, we had jack stands and floor jacks we had all kinds of things back you know, several feet back from the vehicle that I would have you know, would have whacked my head on. So it's just a note that when you're working on these, you know, in the normal range, I mean, I've climbed into the engine compartment, but if you lose your balance, you end up falling back onto the radiator or something. When you take all that out, just be aware. Uh, word to the wise. Interesting thing on this engine, I mean, every generation of engine has different challenges and different advantages. Um, some of the newer engines have electronic throttle control, so you don't have to worry about throttle cables. Um, this one, it, no, the flip side is, though, that throttle cables are mechanical and they're pretty easy to route. So this one is still one of the engines that has a mechanical throttle body with a, with a cable system. And uh, that can be adapted into the pedal uh, in the car that we're going to fairly easily we've looked at it and so that's number one there and as you go through the the whole you know all of these things need to get disconnected if you're going to pull the engine you got to pull all the brackets and cables the, the um, vent hoses and so forth everything gets pulled and marked then these vehicles have a lot of electrical on them uh, this is the main underhood uh, wiring center and the battery ties in up here and it's actually multi-layer you, you know we're going to take it apart 
when you lift up underneath, there are relays and there are things underneath and more wiring. Uh, and again, it took us a long time because we were very careful to, to route where wiring was coming from, where it was going, and keep it all together. Because when you get to this, you want... Um, you can start from scratch and you can buy wiring harnesses and you can start from literally from scratch wiring this engine and all of the sensors. But it helps if you can get as much of the vehicle harness as you can to work from and to transfer from and to have things labeled so you know where they come from, where they go. And we even went through the uh, front of the dash firewall into the passenger compartment because some of the cabling goes up to the instrument cluster and there are some things even in there that are useful. So, so then down in the front of the engine compartment was the ECM and all of its cables. One of the things um, I kind of learned when I was doing the Camaro project is uh, when you put chains and uh, lifting brackets on the engine to remove it, if you're not really, really careful, and sometimes even if you are, you're going to damage, uh, you can damage things on the intake manifold, things that are up above the engine block or above the top of the valve covers and so forth. We were starting to take parts off the engine so that we could get chains on it and lift it uh, without damaging. This manifold is plastic and if you get too much pressure on it you're going to break it. So again, kept working through. Here's what it looks like once we got it down. So we're down to the ports. Uh, you can see the fuel uh, quick connects are here in the back. We got the vending system off. You can see we got a label here that says purge. We've had sensors in the back. We, we've basically cleaned off the entire top of the engine. And then this is typical, just like, eh, just like my old uh, Camaro small block. Uh, it has uh, ground cables uh, bolted into the backs of the cylinder heads on both sides. Uh, something historically that's been done. It's kind of tough to get your hand down in behind there, but you need to get in and get those ground straps released. We had to get the heater hoses free, uh, radiator hoses free, but it's all all starts to get um, get cleaned off. Just a little better look. You can see how much corrosion that dude's been through. Looking at the you know, just look at that fan clutch and some of the things on the front of the engine. Just an example of the wiring. You know, when we say passenger compartment. Um, these engines have OBD2 in the controllers and so you know you want your this is the assembly line diagnostic link connector where you would plug in your OBD2 tool and so you want it you know we kept we kept and captured all of those things sometimes you had to cut them loose and just label the wires there's the cruise control connector this is all of the wiring that we salvaged out of that vehicle and you got the fuse blocks and the ECM and all the wiring that we, all the wiring and sensors that we were able to get out of the car. Dan bought a new harness specific for doing engine swaps. And he used pieces of this along with the new parts that he bought to wire things up. And in a future episode, we'll kind of walk through. Um, you know, what did he do with wiring and how did he make that all come together? So here we are on the hook. It's nice to get the front of the car cleared out so that you can get the engine hoist in closer and have the boom uh, not extended as far. It, it, it can lift more. And so that worked out pretty nice for us. But you can see how much we had to tip it and uh, if you have the transfer case on the back, you're kind of limited how far you can tip. And you can see how far the oil pan uh, extends down on this engine. To get, uh, to get it over the cross member was a considerable amount of work. There's another view, and you can kind of see my uh, Harbor Freight lifting tool and brackets. But with the manifold out of the way, things lifted really nicely. So we managed to get that out of there. This is what we ended up with then. So when you get it sitting down, uh, there's the transfer case, which we didn't need any longer. Um, here's the engine. We just put some shop rags in the intake so that we don't get any dirt 
down inside. And, uh, and you can see the transmission attached here to the back. So that's what we got out of the vehicle. Engine, transmission, transfer case, full wiring harness. Mm, a couple of other odds and ends, I think, but, but that was the essence of it. And that will form the basis of what we put in the Cadillac. Now, the transfer case we're not going to use. Um, I think he sold that. It was a perfectly good function and transfer case. Here's the engine with it kind of stripped down and you can see it's, a, like I say, a little corrosion but not in bad condition. Here's the transmission. This is a 4L60E and for, for a four-wheel drive. Dan found a shop, transmission shop, that took this transmission, took it down, uh, changed the main shaft and the extension housing and turned it into a two-wheel drive unit. He also went through the whole unit and um, it wasn't a complete, I'll say it wasn't a complete overhaul because it didn't need that much, but he went through and refreshed it and replaced parts that needed to be refreshed and uh, cha changed, you know, freshened it up, did a nice job on it and put it all back together for us. So now we so you can convert a four-wheel drive into a two-wheel drive and it's not that hard. And I'm going to go back for a minute and say we saved the ECM because the ECM is calibrated for the engine and it's also calibrated for the transmission. So if you're going to put in a manual transmission this doesn't matter so much but when you do one of these swaps it depends on how much work you want to do. right? We could have taken this off and put a four or put a six-speed on it, perhaps, or an eight-speed, a more modern transmission than the 4L60. But then you need to build a calibration or find a way to take the calibration for that and bring it into another uh, controller, or get two controllers to work together. It's this one. You take that ECM. It's got engine controls. It's got transmission controls. It all works. Dan found somebody, and um, we can again address some of that in the future, but he found somebody who works on ECMs in calibration and went in and customized it for what we wanted to do. And, and when I say customized it, it's like, you know, you could kind of go down. There are a bunch of things that when you go from a new truck to an older car, um, signals that were not, were not needed that could be turned off, or some that needed to be uh, changed in their, um, in their methodology, in their switching. But um, we walked through it signal by signal, path by path, what, it, what came out of the truck, what does the car need to make it go, and uh, yeah, so far so good. We've got more work to do. We're not, running, we're not in and running yet. So there's kind of a close-up of the engine sitting on the stand and uh, ready to be cleaned up. And that's kind of the start of the story. We got a nice engine transmission that was not um, was in good condition. It had a fair number of miles on it. I want to say 160 or 170. Uh, but these engines will run a long, long, long time. It had. It did not use any oil. It didn't have any performance issues. It was really good. The transmission shifted well. So there's. There will be things we need to do on the engine. Uh, it needs a different oil pan to fit in the car. It needs. Um, it ne needs to be cleaned cleaned up. We're going to pull a harmonic balancer. Probably put a timing chain on it. You know, there there will be things that are done just for, uh, the, the sake of. Uh, taking high risk items out, you know, it's going to get a new harmonic balancer, and so forth. So, more to come, but that's all for now.